This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It is yet another Thursday night when we come to your home, right there where you are, bringing you the ever-living, powerful seed of the Word of God. This is the word that will change your life. This is the word that brings in transformation. It is the word that brings in healing. It's the word that brings in joy. It brings in peace. But you have got to open the door for the word to come in. You have got to open your heart for the word to work in you. You can sing the word, you can memorize the word, but if you do not open the door of your heart for this word to work in you, it will just be just like any other, any, any newspaper that you may have read. But I come to you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, telling you that our Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I do not know what you are going through tonight. I may not know the pains that you are going through. I may not know whether you are feeling rejected or discouraged or frustrated. Whatever the case, the word of God has power to bring change in your situation. The word of God has the ability to lift you up from that situation into a place of rejoicing. You may be sitting there and you're saying, I have come to the end of the road. I, have, I am now finished. This is the end of the road. I want to say to you, my friend, that every end means a new beginning. The closing of one door means another one has been opened. Now, as, as we come in, I want to read the word of the Lord so we can be able to hit the road and move on. Remember, we are still on Hebrews chapter number 3 and verse number 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. He is calling us holy brethren and we are partakers of the heavenly calling. I want you to know, my friend, that the calling of God is a heavenly calling. Anything heavenly operating in the earthly will face opposition. So when you are facing opposition, it is because of your calling. It is a heavenly calling. I want to speak to a pastor who is discouraged tonight. Wherever you are, your calling is a heavenly calling. I want to speak to somebody who is feeling frustrated because of the way things have been going. I want to say to you, your calling is a heavenly calling, but operating here on earth. What we need to do is to consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, of our confession, of our salvation. Who is this high priest and the apostle? The man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus. That you can look at the things that Christ faced and realize that you may face similar things. You may face similar opposition. You may face similar frustrations. But Jesus says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You shall also overcome. And that's why Paul comes and says later on, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. I am talking to you, my friend, and I'm saying to you, as we partake of the communion tonight, you are more than a conqueror. May the anointing of the, of the conqueror arise in you. May the courage and the confidence of a conqueror arise in you in the name of of Jesus Christ. Remember what we have said, that the foundation, the foundation of our profession or the foundation of our calling, of our salvation, of our confession is, has three pillars. It is founded on three pillars and pillar number one is the faithfulness of the word of God. God is faithful. 
and you cannot separate God from his word. Pillar number two the, uh, is the foundation of the finished work at the cross. The finished work by Jesus Christ at the cross. In other words, there is not anything, a drop, an iota of something that Jesus remained for you to be, to be saved. At the cross, he accomplished everything. He finished all the work. Therefore, there is nothing you can do to, you can, there are no works you can do to earn your salvation. Salvation is not earnable. Salvation has been given freely to each one of us. If you are willing and stretch forth your faith and receive, salvation is free. It is given freely. Therefore, arise. Don't just sit there and lament. You get born again. And when you get born again, it is a free gift of God. And pillar number three, the reality of our relationship as sons, that we have been made to be sons. Remember, he came to his own in John 1, 11 and 12, but his own did not receive him. But to those who received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. So the reality of our sonship, the reality of our sonship is the third pillar of the foundation of our confession. And that's what we have been talking about. That because we are sons, we have been made, we have been adopted as sons. We have been adopted as sons by his good will. It is him who willed. It is not us who applied. Salvation is not a man-initiated program. Salvation is not a man-started way of life. Salvation was initiated by God right at the Garden of Eden. In fact, the Bible says, before the foundations of the earth were made, he, he bought us, he set us free. But when we come to Eden, we see man, he has created men and men sinned against God. When men sinned against God, God asked Adam, what, is, what happened? It's not me, the woman. Woman, what happened? It's not me, the serpent. And God did not ask the serpent what happened. God looked at the serpent and told the serpent, because you have done this, I have put enmity between you and the woman. He did not ask the serpent what happened, but he brought in judgment on the serpent straight away. And he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between her, your seed and her seed. He talked about the seed of the woman. When he talked about the seed of the woman, he was speaking prophetically that there, there will be a woman who will have bring forth a son or bring forth a se her seed without the seed of the man. And that is the man, Jesus Christ. So God made a way of escape from the beginning for men to get back to him. Why? Because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. God has a plan and a purpose for you. Stop being frustrated. Stop frustrating yourself. You seek the purposes of God. Seek the plan of God. For when you capture the plan of God, in spite of the obstacles, in spite of the opposition, you will enjoy, you will thrive in whatever you do. So we see, we have, it is God who willed. It was not an application from man. It is God who willed to save man. So the work is finished. 
The work was finished and we have been made sons. Therefore, we have been made acceptable. We saw that in Ephesians. We have been accepted of the Father. Oh man, you are saying you have been rejected. You have been re living under re in the, uh, rejection for a long time. I want to say to you, my friend, you have been accepted. You, are, you and I have been redeemed through his blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ. And because we have been redeemed, you have been bought with a price. And the price was the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, you are no longer of your own. You are no longer of your own. You belong to the master. You belong to Jesus. You and I belong to Jesus. Then we also saw you have been forgiven. You have been forgiven and his wisdom is manifested in your life. His wisdom is manifested in your life. So we came to Ephesians 2 and verse number 10. In Ephesians 2 and verse number 10, we did see Paul talking to the Ephesians. And he says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now he is telling us why we are created why we exist, why we are here. Number one, we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. I looked at the word workmanship from the dictionary, and this is what I captured, that the Greek word translated workmanship is poema. Poema. We are a God's poema. At least tonight you can get a Greek word that you can sleep now speaking Greek. Oh, glory to God. The Greek word is poema, workmanship. And that word poema means, it is a word that signifies that which is manufactured, that which is a product, a design produced by an artist. God is the master designer. Oh, my friend, I want you to know, you are not a biological accident. You are designed by God. You, many, so many people like putting on designer suits, wearing designer shoes, designer socks. I want you to know as you walk the streets of your city, as you walk in the village, as you sit in that house, as you drive that car, I want you to know that you are a de designer made. You are a celebrity. You, you have been designed by God. For we are God's, uh, God's poema, workmanship, designed by God, prepared by God. He is the master builder. And being the master designer, God did not make a mistake. Oh, somebody say glory to God. You are not a mistake. You are not an accident. It does not matter how, how you are born. It does not matter what you are going through right now. But I want to say to you, you are not an accident. You are designed by God. And any designer designs something with a purpose, having a purpose for it. The shoe designer designed the shoe to fit the, so that the foot could fit in the shoe. The one who designed the hard gloves designed so that every finger would fit in the gloves. The one who designed a spoon, he designed the spoon so that it could fit in one's mouth. It was designed before they ever made the first one, they had a purpose. Therefore, before you ever arrived here on earth, God had already prepared a purpose for you. You are not purposeless. You are not a vagabond. You are not a loiterer 
loitering from one place to another. There is a purpose for your being here. So he says, <clears throat> so we read, he says, for we are his poema created in Christ Jesus unto good works. In other words, God put in you the ability for good works. So harden not your heart, Buana. You don't just sit there and say, me, I am like this. No, you are designed for good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. It is God who ordained that we should walk in these good works. Now remember, salvation is not by works. Works come after salvation. Which works? The good works. Which are these good works? I will remind you the, wa the words of Jesus Christ in John chapter 9 and verse number 4. In John chapter 9 and verse number 4, Jesus says, I must work the works of him that sent me. That is saying, by the way, I'm not here on my own. I was sent. And the one who sent me gave me the works that I need to do. And I am under obligation to do those works. I must work the works of him that sent me. My friend, I want you to know, I was a school teacher, not knowing what God had called me to do. But in his divine plan, God was preparing me for tonight. God was preparing me. So we, when we meet with you, you will understand the word of God. And that understanding will catapult you to the next level. I can tell you with confidence, I have listened to so many people who have come and told me, you know, when you teach the word, I understand. Someone told me yesterday, you know me, I was a Catholic, but I always wanted to listen to you. Somehow, when you talked, when you preached, when you taught, I understood the word. Now I am born again. Because God ordained us for good works. So God was preparing me as a teacher for today. Wherever you are, God is preparing you for the good works. Every one of us, every one of us has been anointed to do the good works. So Jesus declares and says, I must work the works of him that sent me. I must work the works of him that sent me. You have got to know you have been sent. And you have been sent with orders. You have been sent with a purpose to do the works. Then he says, while it is day while it is day why because the night comes when no man can work now what is that telling us there we are seeing urgency there is urgency in doing what you are called to do there is urgency required in fulfilling what God sent you to fulfill. I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, that a boldness shall arise in you, that a confidence shall arise in you, that will cause you to say, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. In other words, I have no time to waste. I have no time to waste with people who are going nowhere. I have no time to waste with people who want to pull me down. I have no time to waste with any individual who wants to pull me down. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. My friend, day is when you are breathing. Day is when you can move from here to there. Day is when you are agile. This is the day that the Lord has made for you to do the works that he sent you to do. Tonight we have the communion, but my question is this. What do you do after the communion? What do you do after God has blessed you? I have prayed for you. 
and I'm praying for you that the Lord will bless you. The Lord has blessed you with a house. The Lord has blessed you with a car. He's blessed you with a good job. You have a nice suit or a nice dress. You have the ability to do what you want to do when you want to do it. You have the financial muscle to go where you want to go when you want to go. God has blessed you. But I want to ask you this question. Are you doing the works that you are sent to do? Are you doing the works that you are sent to do? Oh, pastor, me, I'm not a, me, I'm, me, I'm, me, I'm not a, I am not a full-time minister. Me, I'm a, me, I'm a teacher. Me, I'm a worker. Me, I'm an engineer. I want you to know that Jesus, Jesus said in John 14 and verse number 12, in John 14 and verse number 12, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, he that believeth on me, not he who is a full-time minister, not he who is an apostle, not he who is a prophet, not he who is an evangelist or a pastor, not he who is ordained, not he who is in a church. Uh -uh. He that believeth in me. I have a question for you, my friend. Are you a believer? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? And I know you are listening to me because you are a believer. Now listen, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Which works? The works that I was sent to do. Remember what Jesus said. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. I must work the works of him that sent me. Now he is talking to you and I. And he is saying, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also. The works that I do shall he do also also and even greater works than this shall he do because I go to my father because I go to the one who sent me now I am sending you now remember what Jesus said as my father has sent me even so send I you as my father sent me even so send I you in other words, you have been sent out under the same anointing that was upon Jesus. You have been sent out with the same authority that Jesus was given so that you may do the works that Jesus did. I want you to know, my friend, the works that Jesus did are not the end kind of entertainment that we see on our TV screens these days. There's a lot of witchcraft that is going on lot of witchcraft that's going on in many places in the name of being called a church. I want you to know, not every place where people are gathering and screaming is a church. Most of those places have become entertainment places. Most of those places have become places where the word of God is never taught, is never preached, and all we are interested in is seeing some saracasis some acrobat acrobatic movements and some queer things happening. I want you to know, my friend, you need to be founded on the word of God. You need to be founded on the word of God. What did Jesus do? The Bible tells us that Jesus preached and he taught the word. He preached and taught the word. The things that Jesus began both to do and to teach. All the Ophirus look right. I'm telling them to you. The things that Jesus began both to teach and to do. That is what we are supposed to be doing. What is what we are seeing miracles. We are seeing a lot of manipulations in, on our screens these days. Lots of manipulations. Jesus never manipulated anybody. 
Jesus never had discussions, discussions and stories from demons. He cast them out. He told them, come out. And they came out. He didn't go into the underworld and say that he's going into the underworld, into the water, and call those spirits to start giving you stories about somebody, and you take that as dogma truth. I want to say to you, my friend, we have got to be founded on the word of God. We've got to stand on the word of God. This word is powerful. This word will change your life. Jesus did the works. He taught the word and he did miracles. Therefore, miracles are some of the works that Jesus did. And the teaching of the word is part of the work that Jesus did. Now, we have been called uh, he has said, and greater works than this shall he do also. The greater works than this shall he do because I go to my father. Now, it's important for us to understand his, uh, what he's saying. Because I have not gone to my father, there are some works I am not able, I cannot do. But you will do them. Those are the greater works. There is nothing greater in our own understanding than raising the dead. There is nothing greater than that. But Jesus says, you will do greater works because I am going to my Father. For me to go to my Father, I will usher in the greater works. What are these greater works? The greatest work, the greatest work is the work of winning a soul to Christ. Bringing a soul into the kingdom. Remember, there is no remission of sin without the shedding of the blood. At this particular time, the blood of Jesus has not been shed. Now he's saying, I'm going to my father. And the only way I go to my father is through the shedding of the blood. Therefore, as I shed my blood, you will do greater works than I have done. You will bring people into the kingdom. You will cause men and women to be born again. You will cause men and women to receive the life of God, my life in them. Those are the greater works. Therefore, I want to challenge you tonight, my friend. As we partake of the communion, let this be your commitment that while we are talking of the great catch, we are saying we are going to bring souls into the kingdom. I pray that as we partake of the communion tonight, a desire for souls will be bathed in you. A desire for souls will be bathed in you. That your only comfort, your only satisfaction will be bringing people into the kingdom. Will be bringing in the harvest. Will be witnessing about the saving power of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus has shed his blood. And as we partake of the cup, tonight. We are remembering the blood that was shed. This is the blood that ushered you and I into the greater works that Jesus talked about. This is the blood that opened a door for us, that gave us opportunities to do the greater works that Jesus talked about. Therefore, as we speak of the, as we partake of the communion tonight, I pray that you'd open up your eyes, open up your spirit, open up your heart, that the Holy Spirit would stir you up to be a soul winner. It is harvest time. It is time for us to harvest the souls. It is time for us to begin on this journey. I want to ask you, my friend, have you given your life to Jesus? Have you said yes to Jesus? This could be the night that you have been waiting for. This could be the day that you have been waiting for. I want to pray with you right there where you are that you may give your life to Jesus. Please pray with me right there where you are out loudly and clearly and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
I have heard your word. And tonight, willingly, I open up my spirit that you may come in and make me your habitation. I receive you tonight as my Lord and my Savior. Because I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this viewer who has made that prayer for the first time. They have opened up their hearts and received you. I pray that you will put the seal of the Holy Spirit upon their lives, that they will know they are born again. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations, my friend. You are now born again. And because you are born again, you can partake of the communion. And the communion will tie you up to become a soul winner. Make sure you tell somebody, I am born again. I have given my life to Jesus. I bless you, my friend. Your life will never be the same again. For the rest of us, tonight I pray that the communion will be a stirring up in every one of us. That every one of us will be stirred up in the inside to become a soul winner. That the, this week, before you come to church on Sunday, you will bring somebody with you. You will witness to somebody. You will pray for someone to know Jesus in the name of of Jesus Christ. And as we partake of the communion, you shall receive your miracle. God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten you. He has heard your prayer. He has heard your cry. And he is saying, here I am. I give it to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us part uh, go and get to partaking of the communion. I trust you are ready right there at home with your family and you are the elements are ready. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 23, Paul declares and says, For I received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for the broken body of Jesus Christ. That by his stripes, we were healed. Let your healing power flow in the lives of your people. Let those who are sick, oh God, receive their healing and their deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ and to, for your own glory. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the blood of, re, of the remission of our sins. The blood that was shed at the cross of Calvary. Tonight, as we partake of the communion, let it be a stirring up in the life of each one of us to become a soul winner. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Right there where you are at home, may you now partake of the communion. Now partake of the cup. I want you to know there is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is power to save, power to heal, power to cleanse, power to change. There is power. May that power 
work in your situation tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the power that you have released through the communion tonight. Lord, I pray for every individual, every family, every couple, every child that has partaken of the communion tonight, that they would experience your miracle working power in their lives, in their bodies, and they will receive a stirring up to becoming soul winners. We thank you and we bless you tonight because you hear us when we pray, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive your miracle right there where you are in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the anointing right there where you are in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord richly bless you. It is now time for us to bring in our offering at the altar. We want to lay our offering at the altar, our sacrifice. Remember, worship is not complete without the offering without the with, with with without without the sacrifice so we lay it to the altar and there are different ways that you can give uh, to this altar right there where you are you can use the our mpesa pay bill number and they are right on the screen for the majestic city and for the house of bread any one of them will do is right there on the screen. The account number is right there on the screen. Use the account number. Come on, get your get your phone. Get your phone. Don't be used. Don't be. Don't get yourself used. Don't take the offering for granted. Don't take your sacrifice for granted. Every time you release, you are opening a door to receive. So you can you can use your 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 your, your, your phone. You can use your M-Pesa, our M-Pesa pay bill number, or you can use the Equity M-Pesa pay bill number two four seven two four seven, and the account our, the church account number is on the screen. Or you can do a direct transfer from your bank to the church account. The church account is in Equity Bank and it's right there on the, on the screen. Or you can write a check payable to Deliverance Church. LCCI, or you can also write Deliverance Church Majestic City, whichever you write. May the Lord richly bless you. We love you and we value you. Now, remember, this is your pastor and your friend, Bishop Mark Karaoke, coming to bless you. And we are on two locations. One at the House of Bread, which is situated at the KPCU building on Helsarasi Avenue, just next to the wholesale market, the famous Marigiti. That's where we are, just next to Anna, Anna Coaches. Or we are there every Sunday morning at 8. And 10.30, we have a second service there. But at 10.30, we are on our second location, which is on Kangudo Road after Rwai, stage 26, at the Majestic City Church. There is, a, there is a big tent there on your right, coming from Rwai. You will see the big tent there. And the, the place is jammed and packed with the presence of God and, and with human beings. We start a service there every Sunday, 10.30. It's a powerful service. You, we want to welcome you to come and worship with us. May the Lord richly bless you. We love you and we value you. Tell somebody what you have heard today. Tell somebody what you have received today. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>